We shift to a dialogue about the world of gaming with the founder of Metia Interactive and creator of Guardian Maya, starting with a look at her mahi. No ngai tua huriria. She brought the whānau with her from Ngai Tahu. Please welcome the amazing Maru Niho Niho. Kia ora, kia ora koutou. Ko kiri eke te maunga. Ko wairuru te awa. Ko tauira mai tawhiti te waka. Ko te whānau a Maru Hairemuri te hapu. Ko te whānau an apanui te iwi. Kia ora koutou katoa. Big shout out to my ngai tuahuriri whānau that are here too, up from Ōtautahi. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you about how a Māori or a young Māori woman at that time gets into gaming. It's a huge industry and it's one that is dominated by males. It was a very, very difficult journey, and it's one I'm going to take you through tonight. So 18 years ago, I started my company, Meteor Interactive, with the goal to design and develop computer games or video games, but in particular, Māori games. And my journey starts here. <laughs> Fish and chips, <laughs> spaces, Friday nights were takeaway nights, and mum would say to me, hey babe, what do you want for dinner? And of course I would be like, fish and chips, because I would buy the least amount of food so I can have more change for the spaces. And I remember as an 11-year-old kid thinking, how did they make these games? You know, like, I'd look around the side, go around the back, I don't know what I was hoping to find, but I was super curious. And during those years of being a young kid, I was like totally immersed in these gaming worlds. You know, it was just such an intriguing experience for a young Māori kid. During the years though, from the age of 11 years old until today, I still play games. I'm real, real competitive in the game world. Like, I want to be the top of the leaderboard, and I'm going to beat your high score, and all that. But in real life, I'm not that competitive. <laughs> I think it would be helpful if I was. Um, so I was playing games um, that were real interesting, but they weren't Māori. You know, I'd play these games and I'd think to myself, why isn't there a Māori game? You know, I want to play a Māori superhero, because it's really, really cool. Well, it would be really, really cool. And so after basically living a whole lifetime in a different career space, I woke up one morning and I said, I'm going to make games. I was really, really good at playing them, but I had no idea how to make them. So in 2002, I decided to put myself through a game development course. But unfortunately in Auckland at that time, there were no game development courses. I had to do the next best thing, which was a multimedia course. And that was good, but I did, still didn't learn how to make games. But what I did do was come up with a game character, and I called her Maya, and I imagined the title to be Guardian. And I was like, yeah, I'm starting to make this Māori game. So I graduated, I had this game idea, it was a pretty big idea. It was like games like God of War, um, games today like Sinua, Hellblade and all that, really cool action-adventure third person. It was going to cost millions of dollars. But I came out of my course still not knowing how to make games. So I took myself 
to these game conferences in LA and San Francisco. I max my credit card. I max mum's credit card. I max my husband's credit card. I used all my savings, and I was just traveling and learning because I couldn't learn it any other way at that time. Today is different. You've got internet, all sorts of things. So I'd go to these um, conferences and I'd sit there and listen. I'd listen to all these other game developers talking about how they make games and I'd be like, yeah, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And I thought, why don't I pitch my Māori game idea while I'm there? And so I did. I was like going up to people that I didn't know, saying, hello, my name's Maru, I'm from New Zealand, I've got a game idea. And they were like, do you speak English? I was like... <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. It was kind of like, yeah, but yeah. And anyway, they had all these different fantasies and dreams about New, New Zealand and Maldives were like avatars and all that kind of stuff. And um, they were really super interested in what I had to say. But unfortunately, that's as far as it went. They were just interested. I couldn't get the deal. Um, I was trying my best. I was like, this is like, you know, the next best thing, Māori culture, it's amazing. And it all was like pitching to the fresh air. So what I did understand from that was that I had never made a game before. And rightly so, they were looking at me like a pretty huge risk. It was like, wow, should we give her like a couple of million dollars? And of course, when I look back at that, I think to myself, yeah, they were kind of right. I might have blown it. But I don't think so, because I was really determined and really inspired to do this. So what I did was rethink what I was doing. So I knew that I was pitching a big idea, it needed a lot of funding, no one was going to back me, so what else could I do? So I came back to New Zealand and I thought about designing the total opposite game idea to what my Māori game idea was. So no characters, um, no storyline, you're just a cube, like that's it, you're a cube, and you roll around the platform collecting stuff and you get to the end. I went back overseas again to these conferences and I pitched and finally I got a deal. So my game cube um, was published on the Sony PlayStation platform worldwide in 2007. <laughs> I got my foot right in that door. <laughs> I was like, I made a game, and it kind of helped because a lot of people were then listening to me and wanting to talk to me and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, Cube went on to win a United Nations um, award, and I was like, oh, I can't get any better. Oh my gosh, it's amazing, especially from somebody, a Māori wahine trying to break her way into the industry, trying to be taken seriously. I mean, it was hard for a woman, just women in general in that industry. So imagine what it was like for a Māori woman or woman of colour. It was even more impossible. I'd get comments like, are you the marketing girl? I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm a developer. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it was just a whole lot of sort of girls don't play ga games, girls don't make games and all those kind of comments. And it really gets to you. So you have to grow a real thick skin to continue on, you know, and move ahead. Since that game, I went on to make more games. Um, this one is called Sparks. This is the first of its kind. It was a game developed for our rangatahi that suffer from mild depression. It was based on cognitive behavioural therapy and it went through clinical trial. It came out with very effective results. It showed that the game was just as effective as face-to-face -face therapy. And that won two more international awards. <laughs> just coming to my kōrero now about reflection. And one of the moments in my game development journey where I had to reflect about what I do was when I got the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2016 for my services in gaming and mental health. And at that moment, I was like, 
wow, am I really doing something that's really impactful, you know, really meaningful? Because when you're in it, you're just working. You know, it's just like, what's the next game? You know, get this one shipped. You know, you're just so in the mahi that you can't, you know, you don't have time to look back. So winning the, these awards gives me that opportunity or gave me that opportunity to think back and reflect on the type of work that I do. And games are more than just entertainment. They're powerful plaps, platforms for education because they're interactive, immersive, and fun. So for me, when I was named Forbes Top 50 Women in Tech, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, me, are you sure you got the right person? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we got the right person. You're the one. And it just made me reflect even more and made me understand that I'm on the right path, you know, especially in the world of games. So what happened to that Māori idea? the big one that I started designing when I was studying at school, the one that I tried to pitch when I was at GDC and tried to get the million dollar you know, deal for. Well, my intro video showed some of our mahi that we're working on with that game, which is now called Guardian Maya. <laughs> Guardian Maya, though, is more than just a Māori game. It's a game about a wahine who is motivated, who has to get through obstacles to meet her objectives. It's about a woman that faces all sorts of barriers and obstacles. And it's a story about reflection, self-doubt. You know, it's all that good stuff that we humans are, have naturally. She's not just a, you know, fierce wahine toa with her wahika and go around killing everyone. Um, the violence is necessary. <laughs> it's not unnecessary. <laughs> she it has a purpose. And it's about really overcoming the odds. So this, this is a quick background before I get to my final part of my kōrero, is um, it's really about showing our young people that they can do this too. Everything is in their hands, internet, whatever, resources are free. You can make a game tomorrow if you want. If you want, if you have the time, if you have the motivation. So this is about inspiration as well. So in time for Matariki, hopefully we're working on it, we're going to launch um, a spin-off game based on Guardian Maya, where our Tamariki are going to have the opportunity to play the game for free, so they can learn about coding concepts, so they can understand what coding is, because we need more Māori and technology. <laughs> There's so very few of us, and it's a lonely space. You know, we need to encourage our younger generations to grasp these tools. You know, we're naturally innovative anyway, and very tutu. Um, I'm a tutu person, I like breaking things and try to fix them and, and all that. So this game gives them a taste of what it's like to code. I think, you know, just reflecting on the type of games that I do or have done, it's really, really important why we have more Māori in tech and in gaming because we have an authentic voice and we have plenty of stories to tell, whether they're based on mythology, in our culture, or whether they're interactive fiction. It doesn't matter, it's our unique voice. So let me show you um, our game called Guardian Maya Waihere, and it's about coding. Yeah. Maybe.
put a... I forgot to say that the game includes all the stars of Matariki as well. <laughs> But I also just want to say that the game will be up on both the App Store and Google Play and it'll be free to play and we have teacher resources as well. So if you any teachers out here that you want to go through with your tamariki or if you're a you know parent and you want to go through with your tamariki and you get stuck on the puzzles yourself, you can jump on our website on our YouTube channel and it will explain all the concepts behind coding as, um, that relates to this game. So watch out. Maybe a week, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be live and ready to download. Kia ora. <laughs>